I didn't want to I didn't want to drag it out because, you know, there's a possibility that I might be nervous to meet you and, and be on camera. So <laughs> it's, it's the other way around. <laughs> uh, you do You doing all right there? Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well, great. you know, that's that's very kind of you to say that, but I haven't started the torture. I mean, the conversation yet. <laughs> <laughs> My heart is pumping anyway. It's like, thank God you cannot see it. <laughs> well, I was, I was trying not to, to stretch it out to the point that it would make you more nervous, but I wanted to also make sure that I didn't just jump into this so I would give you time to, to, to just be yourself and, and open up and move toward yeah. this conversation. And then I said, you know what? Let's just do this. Right. <laughs> Let's it. just do. Right. Yeah. Let's just get to it. Let's just get to it. Get it going because we're going to find our groove and we're going to be all right. That's what I thought. I just thought, okay, let's <laughs> jump right into it and and you're here <laughs> to support me through it. Oh, you got now you got it. We're a team. I tell people Love that all the time when they come on. Accent. When we come on this show, we're a team. That's right. I got your back. I know you got mine. We're all good. And if anything goes wrong, it's always my fault. Oh. <laughs> I'm always, I'm always the one to blame. The no, no, no. I want it. Fun. Nope. I want it all myself. I don't, that I don't share. Blame and whose fault it is. I will take it as full responsibility and accountability. Once. Okay. <laughs> Once. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I'm really oh, excited. I, Thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome. Um, I've, uh, I've been admiring the work you've been doing. Um, uh, I see that you're extremely shy to be in front of the camera. Yes, I am. By by doing a lot of camera work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's like, yeah, that's true. But you, I have to say, everyone who is shy in front of the camera, that's already a little bit of a sign that there is a form of anxiety or something that you're uncomfortable with. And okay. I made this promise to myself. And I practice what I also preach to my own uh, client or the people around right. me. And if I'm uncomfortable, then I push myself to do it because out of the comfort zone, I think is something that gets you yeah, into different waters, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's, it's kind of not, that the belt of, of anxiety or, or fear doesn't become too tight. So I kind yeah. of consciously practice it myself. But having said that, I also <laughs> am Ooh. uncomfortable with it. <laughs> Well, your uncomfortableness and your, your willingness to discuss your uncomfortableness is why we are here together today. I wanted okay. to make sure that people understand that today, um, many, many of them who watch this regularly know that on Fridays, I am at my goofiest uh, out of all <laughs> the days of the week. Uh, okay. So... Um, uh, Monday, I'm, I'm usually my crankiest, as it were, or not, not difficult to be around, but I'm the slowest that I could possibly be on Mondays, so I try not to do shows on Monday. However, okay. on Fridays, I, I normally torture whoever is on because I don't take anything serious, even if it's the stuff I take serious. But today's <laughs> a little different for me because with you, you're going to be the first person that I'm going to... Um, talk about a few things here that that mean a lot to me we're going to discuss anxiety because it's a common uh, thing that people write to me about or talk to me about to have on yeah. the show along with a few other things so i wanted to do that today on friday because some people watch this show and on friday they have the day off and they want to hear about anxiety and tips that they can get so yeah. i chose i chose you i chose okay. you to join <laughs> join me on this day so we can we can go over some tips, some strategies, some skills yeah. that can be implemented so that individuals can have bite-sized progress steps uh, that they see for themselves individually, not in comparison to someone else. Yeah. Now that, I, now that I got that out of the way, I have one more thing to get out of the way, and then we're really going to start the show. Okay. Yesterday was, was a day that I did a show for the first time on a generator. We didn't plan it. It just so happened that some work is being done to give us a bigger studio uh, and the electrician and others are here working. Um, so electricity was turned off so that they could be safe, but we did the show anyhow. 
So I'm telling you right now, ahead of time, we're about to do a show with me not knowing at any moment the power could be turned off, turned off and I refuse to reschedule with <laughs> okay. you. I was going to do this. I'm going to do this show no matter what, That's regardless, because they have they have to get things done because, well, there's a timeline. At some point, I got to get into the new studio. So <laughs> Talk now that I turn off. <laughs> that's exactly what I said. I said, I am not I am not canceling this show. I'm going to have right. it anyhow. And if the it's lights awesome. go out, I've got a flashlight and we're going to just keep going. No, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> so um, I don't want anybody to die and get electrocuted. But at the same time, I want us to, to do this show. Here we go. I am going to um, toss some things at you. Okay. And um, some of these are, are points that are on your page. But they also are some things that are very connected to the viewers uh, that they have mm -hmm. sent me in the past. And okay. I wanted to put them before you, and then you just have at it. You just go ahead and talk about it because mm -hmm. you're the professional. Okay. Ooh, Shoot. That was a very, very long intro <laughs> on this show. I hardly ever take that long. But here we go. When it comes to this first one, uh, uh, it's panic disorders. Mm -hmm. Panic disorders. Please uh, feel free to talk about, as a psychologist, what are some points people need to keep in mind when it comes to panic disorders? Uh, and also panic anxiety. I, I don't know if the difference, I'm just putting them both together. It, yeah. Feel free to speak about panic disorders, panic uh, anxiety or attacks, as it were. Go right ahead. So I, I always like to keep it simple because speaking like, you know, like the psychologist can become very complex. So I like to keep it more of like close to the people and how they experience it. And I add also my, my own experience, obviously, to it, having had, based on my own uh, past experience, anxiety and panic disorder like and the feeling of it and what anxiety is is you're constantly under stress and having this fear and for me panic is then the escalation of it so it starts with feeling anxious and that uncomfortable feeling and it adds to the thoughts but it, it is more like the physical symptoms you suffer with in the beginning of like some people who have sweaty hands fidgety fingers or the heart starts racing and then it adds with negative thoughts most of the time and you become your own sort of internal yeah bully in a way it is it is wow. something that misguides mm. you and makes you feel um a lot of people tell me and i also experience myself that they're feeling you're not good enough um that there, there are flaws around the way you are or the, yeah, the thing the way you do things um and it can escalate if that constant bullying, let's say, goes on for, for some people goes on for hours. Uh, wow. or, yeah, sometimes even days. It can escalate that you suppress it so much and you try to fight it. Most mm -hmm. of the time you try to fight this thought with another thought or you suppress the physical symptoms because you're in a social environment, you don't want anyone to see. And it can escalate to that extent that you feel like you're having this heart attack or you, you cannot breathe anymore. It's like someone literally stepping on, onto your chest. And that is then a panic attack. And there are severe, there are different stages of any, everything. There's, there's people ending up in hospital because of it, um, mm. because it literally feels like you are dying or you're on the edge of dying. And mm -hmm. it's an extremely unpleasant feeling. It, what I always say in, in every let's say first session or whoever I meet who has anxiety or panic attacks mm. is most of the time those people are amazing, amazing, beautiful and highly sensitive people. Yes. And that's, that there's, this is the, this is the upside and the other side of the metal that most of the people who struggle with those like symptoms never look at. They see themselves in a very harsh way and put themselves into a very harsh light but actually they're amazing people. So that's something to really, I think, always point out in the, in the beginning. And there is so much that can be done physically. So you can really help yourself physically to, to, to reduce anxiety or having like not running into a panic attack. And okay. that is for me, something that I made sort of a little bit my, my, my personal mission in a way, because mm -hmm because I suffered it as well. And I always thought 
most of the people who struggle with anxiety and panic attacks, they don't reach out. It's a huge embarrassment around it. It's a huge thing of like feeling weak um, mm -hmm. or society will judge you. And then they, they, you just, most people then naturally start also isolating themselves or disconnecting from, from people, family, friends. Um, and that's why like, I think working with your whole body and the mind can, you can go miles with it and you don't need necessarily therapy for it. If you have the tips and tricks and tools that you yeah. can do sort of to empower yourself, sort of to help yourself, and right. then, then, then you, you can already like reduce at least it to some extent and create that self-awareness and so self-love. And, and uh, through that, a person will start to have even more self-respect because they won't feel uh, so maybe so sh shameful or feel guilty that they're isolating themselves, that this pattern that they had will cause them to, as you said, isolate themselves uh, and even not reach out. Uh, yeah. Because the the daily life skill and ability, or even a daily lifestyle of working through the anxiety, can really can really change the dynamics of a person's life. Because based upon what you just said, you've given us essentially just jotting down what you said. You've given us a timeline that leads to a person starting off with anxiety, uh, bullying themselves attacking themselves as it were even end up uh, physically feeling like they're having a heart attack through a panic attack uh, to the point that they will not reach out they will end up isolating themselves but but addressing the anxiety or the causes or the way we perceive anxiety uh, the way we handle it at the very beginning can have a, a big effect based upon what you're saying because a person I'm gonna pick me I'm feeling anxious and I have anxiety. Uh, that, that's something that I myself going through. I'm using me as an example right now. Yeah. Then I began to pick on my shortcomings or my imperfections, my flaws. Uh, let's say I, I'm nervous about getting in front of a room of people and speaking. And so therefore I start to compare myself, be, be down myself. I do what you said. I love the way you said that. I began to bully myself maybe. I, yeah. I, I am essentially bullying. I go from being anxious to now bullying myself, picking on myself, putting myself down to the point that I can almost go to the next step of attacking myself, literally physically feeling as if I'm not worthy. Uh, I'm not good enough. Yeah. And let that build a negative thought loop can start to happen from exactly. based upon what you're saying. Is that yeah. how it kind of happens? That's exactly how it is. You, you, when, when, for example, you start having an anxiety, it's, mm -hmm. it's literally the physical symptoms, but also the, the, it's actually the thoughts that kick in. And that's okay. mostly negative. And that's the bullying part. But you're also literally searching for proof. So ev everyone who has experienced oh, anxiety okay. or has a yeah. head and panic attack, they're belief system is like you start searching you look for proof oh this person looked for example angry or suspicious or you know yeah. so you attach also that you project it also done to other people or or things yeah. or so you're like this is here because because you did, my boss looks at me angry but maybe mm -hmm. your boss just has a toothache <laughs> or it's grumpy because it's Monday, you know? That's good. So yeah, right. It yeah. is, but it, you project it onto yourself because it is that, that loop you're in. And then you find that out external proof or you try to find it. And it seems yeah. yet so real in that moment. And then it becomes an overwhelming, like, it's literally stacking str stress on top of stress. That's what right. happens. And that's, that's the physical side of it. But in your, in your, your mind and your brain is actually just yeah. overwhelmed because it's like a, right. it, it's a bullying situation and no one likes to be in an uncomfortable situation. Right. And mm -hmm. if you sit in it for too long, no one can take it. Okay. So let, let me try this. I'm going to do something I haven't done before, but we'll do this. If anyone is here right now in the group chat, Many of you know that uh, you as the audience are technically are the real host of the show because you interact with our guests. If you feel free to do so today, if you deal with 
what we're talking about. This internal bullying, uh, constantly finding yourself in a negative thought loop, uh, highlighting your flaws, uh, pointing out your own uh, insecurities to yourself to the point that you feel like you can't get out of bed, you, you can't uh, go for that next job or do uh, the next thing that you would like to do. If you feel yourself overwhelmed with anxiety, feel free, you have this opportunity, to literally, at no cost, talk to a psychologist and get some tips that we're going to go over. But more importantly, you can reach out uh, to Caroline, right? And uh, they yeah, can talk to you Anytime. online. You can DM her, and uh, she's available to you uh, if you want to talk with her privately. But right now, if there's uh, anything that you would like to ask her, that's the whole point of Narc Abuse TV Network. And what we're doing here uh, is that you're able to reach out to someone talk with them ahead of time, see them in the show, and be able to discuss things that you're going through. If you're feeling overwhelmed with anxiety today, feel free to reach out to Caroline privately or in this group chat. When it comes to being anxious, anxiety, this is, I haven't met somebody that can say that they've never had that. But no, because... It's yeah. normal. It's natural. It would be yeah. awkward not to have anxiety at all. It's just if it's elevated, then it becomes a, a problem. But in general, and, we all should have it. But when it's elevated, what's elevated for one person may not be the same for another. That's true. It is. It depends on also how often and in what situation anxiety pops up. Okay. Like if you're, for example, haunted uh, or you're, you're in a, let's say, in a, in a ghost house in the, in the fun fair, then it's normal that you feel also a form of anxiety or something, not knowing okay. what's going to happen or you feel threatened or something like this, or you walk down an alley as a woman at night. It, that, these yeah. are situations yeah. that are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But if you sit, let's say, in a safe place mm -hmm. in your office alone and it happens, um, or you're at home, then then it's elevated. Then it's something that is uh, triggered by 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 something that could be a thought, something that is not not an instinct per se. Because it, we have anxiety in us as an instinct based on on, on human nature. If we, we were sleeping in the jungle, you know, or out there, and needed to be alert, and that's what it is. Anxiety is like you need to be alert to protect yourself. But if, if you if, have it all the time, it's a, it becomes a problem. If it, if, it, if it happens all the time, there's a pretty good chance something is making it happen. Do you, do you in your practice try to figure out what that is for the person and help them walk down that path? How can a person find out if they're in a quiet office, like you said, yeah. or if they're at home quietly, but yet that anxiety comes in? How can you, how can you without going into major detail, yeah. every situation is different. How can you help someone walk through that? So the first thing that I, I noticed, and that's also, I, I don't talk about efficiency really, but if you want, if you are in an anxious sort of state, you also ask basically for efficiency because most of the people had suffered for months or years on end and they want mm. sort of an end to that. So yeah. in, 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 in therapy, if they, if people come to my practice, I look first at how we cope with it now, because you cannot dig into the root cause of anything if you cannot cope with it now, because they're in like, some people are really in survival. They're trying to mm -hmm. survive day by day. And then you cannot, um, if you struggle with sleep, but which is most of the time impacted as well, because you have nightmares or you have that sort of anxiety, or if you have right, panic right. attacks, if you get into a car, then you want to fix your daily life being in the present first. So you need to sort of these at hand coping tools, which I really like okay. working with your whole body and you want something that you can ground yourself first. So having okay. that, that skill set, and then the next step is, which starts sort of like simultaneously, but you want to create that safety net for yourself first so that you can re rely on yourself and then you dig into the root cause of it. And that, that, is, that, is, that is how I do also a work in therapy, that you can dig and you should also dig into what's, what's the root cause of my anxiety. And there is, obviously there's different opinions around in, in the field where anxiety comes from. Is it genetics? Is it family related? Can be 
um, but it can also be that childhood trauma, and that's what I experienced. Childhood trauma, trauma in general, is, is something that is has impacted it or caused it in 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 a way. Yeah. So when it comes to working through the anxiety, trying to dig up and going way back when is not going to necessarily help a person to stand still and be grounded in the moment. So you're saying a person needs to, I'm your client, for example, mm -hmm. I would yeah. need to make sure I am implementing what you're giving me in the moment as we're doing that session, what I need to have a safety net, which is the safety net is me. I'm the safety net for myself. I'm not looking for something external to calm the anxiety per se, uh, mm -hmm. or rely on bad habits uh, to, to, to uh, calm the anxiety. You're saying you will help me work through whatever it is that I need to, to find some type of baseline to work from in the moment, if, if I understand. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, well, it is like for you cannot for like fix, let's say, the anxiety in like one session or something. So, but you learn certain tools, but also like skills. And a lot of the times, it is also related to lifestyle habits, for example, or or you. It is basically what you're doing with the grounding techniques or okay. these kind of coping skills. You learn, you get to know yourself, but you also learn. How do I actually make the anxiety not escalate? How do I not go into a panic attack? And right. that is right. when you have that skill or that, that when you're able to do this yourself, then you start creating that trust bond within you. But you simultaneously also create healthy boundaries for yourself because you become more self-aware. And okay. self-awareness is, is one of the first steps as well as self-love learning that and then then you're able to trust and believe in yourself and and dig deeper because otherwise it becomes a if you dig right into the past um then it becomes too much so it's like it literally a step-by-step -step plan got it now now um you got a question for your uh from someone here uh let me get to that just a second here uh, Anne is going to ask the question. Good morning, Anne, or I should say maybe afternoon to you. Anne is from Ireland, by the way. She regularly watches hey, the Anne. show. <laughs> so she says, can you feel anxiety years later, even if you have done the healing work? Yes, you can. Because anxiety is, is a lot of the time something that if, it, if you had, if, I'm assuming, Anne, it comes from a trauma. Mm -hmm when you say healing, um, that it's normal that if you had a trauma, that even if the wound has healed, the scar is going to be still there. And it will always cause your trigger in a way that if, if, if you are reminded of your trauma, it might that you're not going to go into a panic or that you have not the full length of an anxiety attack, mm -hmm. but it can be the trigger for still feeling anxious can be the person or the situation or something like this, but the self-awareness per se makes you help and deal with it or cope with it better because you will be like able to make literally like the step to the side and be like, wait a minute, this was my trigger. Mm. This yeah. is reminding me of, 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 of what happened and my reaction, my anxiety is completely normal. And instead of, of fighting that feeling that comes up, which is no more mm. natural would be that would be kind of wrong to say that it shouldn't be there. It should also be there. You will actually allow it to happen. You'd be like anxiety. That's okay. Because this was a traumatic event. This was something that bad happened and mm. allow it. And you, you can, you can literally learn to hold it and be like there and okay. It's a, it's all right. Because what most people do who have not had the grounding techniques or the skill sets or something, which is also normal, but, they, they try to fight and suppress the feeling. And that makes an anxiety mm -hmm. or a panic much worse. Uh, so by that, allowing, will make it, that will make it worse, but by allowing it, it gives it room to breathe? Yes, you make it less of a challenge. You have to see it like, like a pot with boiling water. If you put the lid on it and you keep on pressing it down, eventually the... the the steam and everything wants to come out, but you will eventually, if you have to do this for literally years, let's say, 
you will be so weak. Your arm cannot take it. You can take it for an hour. You can maybe stand there for a day, but eventually you cannot. So it, that's exactly the same thing. So if you just keep on fighting it, it's just going to eventually not break you, but it's, it exhausts you. And that's the thing with anxiety and panic, the same thing. It, more people today are feeling exhausted because there's something that they're trying to suppress or hold down or, as it were, keep it together, uh, yeah. whether it be from a pandemic uh, to parenting uh, to painful memories. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like pick a pee. It doesn't matter. Painful memories, pandemic, or, or when it comes yeah. to parenting or other aspects of life, uh, people are finding it a struggle to keep it together where maybe they were able to do so in a much easier way before the pandemic. Now everything seems to be shaken and stirred. So more people are in a position that they're looking for more information about anxiety. Yeah. What you're, what you're laying out to everyone right now is that we can't keep our arm can't keep the lid down. Eventually things are going to blow. Yeah. So, we need to find strategies and skills to work around those. What strategies and skills do you offer uh, that you've experienced that work for you that you could maybe pass on as uh, options for others to think of? Simple, like simple things actually, and that everyone can do. They don't need, no, no, you don't need to read many books about it or something. It's, it's also something you want something that you can, have everywhere and at all times. So if, for example, it starts already with something yeah, simple. In, in, during the pandemic, for example, everyone was home. So distraction, there was no distraction, right? So you were always at home and suddenly we lack also that structure that we actually needed. So um, something that can really help you is already starting with something practical and having a morning routine. A very simple one, but maybe different to what you're used to. Because most people, for example, they wake up in the morning and the first thing they do is they take their phone. And I used to do the same. It's just because mm -hmm. it's a nice habit. It's just like, okay, it's also my alarm on it. But for someone who has anxiety or has a panic disorder, it can be a severe trigger. Because already what happens is you, you're on the screen and all of your thoughts is kind of like, switched on they're all switched on at the same time like all the worries the emails you're like oh god the news there's also the negative news for example on the pandemic or in general mm -hmm. what happens in the world right so there is and if you're already in that alert state and a lot of people wake up then already feeling anxious having this flattery feeling and like okay and then there's the stress mm -hmm. i have to get ready and i have to maybe have go on my zoom call so Having a morning routine can really work. Put your phone aside. In the first 15 minutes, get yourself like this completely traditional, you know, clock. <laughs> like I had it like, you know, 30 years ago, basically. But they work. You know, they still work. They work. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, watch that, watch that. Now you're talking to an old person there. Watch the way you say that, lady. <laughs> what, what was up? What was up with it? At 30 years ago. Okay, that's that's like, you know, that's that's like when I was a teenager. What are you trying to, you said that. Oh, yeah, but my Go son ahead. doesn't even know them anymore. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so a traditional clock, uh, what do yeah. you consider a traditional clock? Is that the one with the crank, like when I, you know, when I was born? Or are you talking about, you know, the <laughs> chalk letters? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, go ahead. So a, tr a, a yeah. traditional clock, in other words, yeah. uh, instead of using the, the your oh. cell phone as yeah. the clock. Oh, okay. Actually, having the phone out of your bedroom is is such a relief. Yeah. It is literally yeah. a relief. So set yourself yeah. a time 15 minutes before. So you have literally 15 minutes to just do something you love. It can be your shower. For someone who has already that anxiety feeling, I always recommend, and it really, really works. It is, it's, it's crazy, but it does. If you, if you can, and you, if you live in a cold place, but also if you know, we live in a warm place, mornings are most of the time not extremely hot. Otherwise, please use some cold water or something. But if you just open the window and allow mm. fresh air yeah. in and have your morning tea, morning coffee, or whatever you do, like, just five minutes by the window. Mm -hmm.
that makes such a difference. I can tell it from my own experience, but I can actually literally say from, from my clients, they said, if yeah. I do this regularly, it becomes a, a nice routine, but my anxiety is right away, like not as extreme as it was. So that, right. that is something helpful. Get out of bed, but don't kind of go into the action mode. Rather just get out of bed. That's, that's the action you need to take because when you stay anxiety and the thoughts, love to come in that's just something mm -hmm. and create that nice morning routine just by the window or you know or cuddle up on a sofa do some five minutes meditation sit in silence it doesn't need to be one of the guided meditation things or you know just just sitting there and enjoying and yeah. being in the moment that in itself gives you a sense of calm and those five ten minutes this is like a red line that goes throughout your whole day mm -hmm. that makes, if you start your day in a calm way, you will see if you keep on doing it, it creates a form of a habit yeah. and you, you will have a, a better day in general. That is already well, something that makes a big difference. That uh, is being well received. Others uh, appreciate that too. Uh, in the chat, you're, you're literally talking about making sure that we don't just jump into things that can, well, uh, the word uh, that's common today is trigger. We, we don't want to step into things that would immediately start to um, dysregulate us, move us uh, to getting all amped up. Uh, maybe we need to internally uh, just spend some time with ourselves instead of reaching yeah. for the phone, reaching for the phone, reaching for, you know, trying to make something, trying to be productive outside of ourselves. We can spend some more time quietly. Uh, or doing what we want to to be productive internally uh, before we start our day. Um, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Hey, so I have a question. I have a question for you. You ready? You ready? Yeah, ready? This is this is just popped into my head. This is like a, a mini quiz. No, it's not. It's not a quiz. Okay, here we go. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. What does the word that I'm about to say? What does it mean to you? This word. I'm going to say this yeah. word. Are you ready? Yeah. The word is lavender lavender oh yeah that's a big meaning to me <laughs> <laughs> i actually like i'm a huge fan and... obviously i obviously <laughs> i've researched you so <laughs> go ahead go ahead i've seen so, the videos go ahead what i what i do is mm -hmm. because i noticed with, with a lot of my clients but also for myself i i work very well with like anything that's physical or with my senses because I always, when I had an anxiety or panic attack, I needed something. I couldn't just fight it or with a thought and just be like, yeah, I just, that's just, you know, a thought. That's impossible. Right. So I needed something and I researched it and I, I went into all the uh, bits and pieces of it of what can I do? Because I'm also totally, at least I'm not a doctor or anything, but I'm not a, not a fan of taking medication because I always think it's a short-term fix. Mm -hmm. um, it helps, of course, a lot of people, but um, for me, it wasn't the option. So and I thought, okay, lavender, that could be something I researched it that helps and has similar effects like an anxiety medication. And if you apply it on your pulse point and you can actually take it everywhere if you have it in an oil roller and if it should be good quality one, but it helped me so much. Like every time when I was anxious, I was like integrating it together with a breathing technique just two minutes and I felt mm. like, okay, relieved. And I, I, mm -hmm. I personally like it in my morning routine. It's just because when I sometimes wake up, then I have this flattery anxious feeling. It's just based on my own experience and my, my, my trauma, literally. So the, it comes up as well sometimes. And then I use it. I, I have it as a regular thing and I just breathe it, do a small, small breathing technique it's very simple and it, it it's it's amazing and it, for me it's it's perfect and the, my clients they they love it because it's something that is it's not so obvious to anyone and you can take it for example on public transport where a lot of people have panic attacks for example so it, it it's it's practical i um i enjoy the videos that uh, you make uh, <laughs> you you often leave yourself being so transparent about your life 
and uh, the things that uh, you are dealing with and have dealt with and uh, the challenges that you face uh, when you deal with anxiety. Uh, even though you help others, you also uh, are very transparent about uh, the routines, the morning routines and different aspects of life that you need to put into play. So you're very yeah. exemplary. You're very exemplary about doing that. You're not just telling everybody to do it. And no. uh, very down to earth, uh, the way you discuss those things. Uh, but you also are a person who's experienced childhood trauma yourself uh, as well uh, in your life. Uh, but uh, I got to read something to you before uh, we yeah, go ahead. we talk about that. Uh, on the screen, uh, the book goddess, um, Sherry, she said, uh, grounding, this was much earlier, grounding inner safety uh, is a source. I guess that's what she's stating there. I'm trying to read between the lines there. Excellent process. Uh, we know the triggers, but we don't always know the belief we assigned to the experience. Um, man, I should have had coffee this morning. You guys are talking high tech you now. You know, all of you guys are good. That was good. Grounding <laughs> is very important. She's agreeing with you on that. Inner mm -hmm. safety, uh, she highlighted. Um, everybody, feel free to take a look at the, the book goddess. Like, comment, share her uh, book as well. Um, Caroline. The energy that we start to feel trying to get out because of anxiety can be caused by trauma of the past. Yeah. Your, your experience with trauma in your life and dealing with others that have dealt with trauma, uh, it's not easy uh, to maneuver through those things. Uh, memories and experiences can come back to create yeah. an anxiety at the least expected time it can happen. I want to touch on what can be done or someone can think of to do or put into practice when those traumas begin to resurface, the experiences of those start to resurface and cause havoc in a maybe a good day. Maybe a person's having a good day and it starts to resurface. Can we do that when we come back? We're going to take a short break yeah, and then we're going to come back. Can we do that when we come yeah. back? Yeah, and, yes, and, we can. And, and I have a few more things here that you have no idea that I'm going to ask you <laughs> uh, because I've been trying to keep up with all those videos you make over there. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> for someone who doesn't want to be in front of a camera, my God, Lord. All right, so uh, living life after divorce is here. Uh, Brom is here. Brom says, I, I hate the ticking sound uh, if he got an old-fashioned clock. Uh, well, um, that's that's uh, – the ticking, some people use it to uh, put them to sleep. Yeah, so, and, and, and some people find it irritating. Brom yeah. said a digital one also fine as long as it's not your phone. That's more yeah. than what I wanted to say. So digital is yeah. also completely fine. Anything but your phone maybe can give you a head start on getting some uh, some um, good night's sleep. Uh, the Pack Coach yeah. has joined us here as well as 619. Mm -hmm. uh, Veronica 619 is here as well uh, and a few others. Pack Coach says you have amazing eyes thank you very oh, much i you. actually i try <laughs> she ain't talking to you girl she's talking to me don't even try oh. to go there so like i was saying before i was rudely interrupted by caroline yes thank you very much uh the pack coach uh i i tried to clean my glasses so everyone can see my my soft subtle eyes and okay all right she's talking to you she's talking to you whatever she's talking to you go ahead and take the compliment uh you have amazing eyes deep Sorry. Be deep beautiful I like the way you just took that real quick. She, you don't know she was talking to you. She could have been talking to me. So, <laughs> so, so, okay, wait. You know, you know what we're gonna do? You, this is you and I. We're a team, right? So as a yeah. team, let's both give Pack Coach a compliment about her eyes. Yes, Pack Coach, amazing eyes. I love yes, you. Also absolutely. Love <laughs> yes, all. <laughs> You circle back around to the comment. I like the way you went right back to that compliment for yourself. No, okay. Not a comment. No. You said ha ha. Oh, yes. So that's like, right. Oh, yeah. yeah I see that. Yes. The joke was actually on us. So. <laughs> no, no, no. She's a good look. She says she knows the, the joke is on me. That's what she's pretty much saying right now because she was talking to you as the hearts stream across the screen. screen. All right. I don't even want to talk to you people anymore. You guys, man, I can't even get a compliment out of this show. All right. We love you too. Anastasia, thank you for the compliment, my friend, uh, the pack coach. She's a, an amazing person. You know what? There you go. That's a show. I should get both of you and her on a show together. That's what I should do. 
I should get both of you two. <laughs> you two need to go do a live a live together. Uh, yeah, that would be interesting. That might be interesting to watch both of you two together, complimenting each other back and forth. Nothing, would, you guys would just be complimenting <laughs> each other. Nobody would be talking about what anything. <laughs> just, just like a power show. Just like, there you go. All right, all right. Everybody, we're going to take a break. Uh, we've gone 42 minutes and uh, handed out okay. as uh, we could a few tips for everybody. We're going to come right back, and we're going to discuss a few more things uh, from your page. Uh, please tell everyone your Instagram page. My Instagram page is Caroline Middelsdorf. It's very complicated, so please <laughs> um, better check it. It's not <laughs> complicated. It's not yeah, complicated. They just, I'm, just I'm don't be lazy. So yeah, I'm just the only go look. One. It's Caroline there it is. Middelsdorf. There, there is. The only there one. There are not many Middelsdorfs in this world, so you will find me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there had to wait. There had to be some. There had to at least be two for you to be here. So, so, all right. So, um, please like, comment, share. Follow her page, okay? Yeah. Like, comment, share, follow Caroline's page. Any questions? I'm happy to yes. help and answer any any questions, and I mean it. I always reply, and when I can help, I I will do it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be back in a little bit. She's actually going to talk a little bit more and and help a little bit more on a few things. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, as I mentioned, uh, childhood trauma or traumas of the past, and we're also going to touch on something that is happening in november uh so we're going to talk about that as well uh we'll be right back everybody see you in a little Perfect. bit yeah see you <laughs> 